welcome back to another video of interview series okay so in today's video we are going to discuss the most asked interview questions related to the web api okay so without wasting any time let's go straight into the question and uh, if you love this kind of content then please do subscribe the channel and share the content with your friends okay so let's start and uh, go straight into the first question so the first question says what is caching and where do we need it and what is what are the benefits of caching right so uh, this is one of the most asked question in uh, any of the web api interview okay so before we proceed to the answer uh, if you are preparing for a full stack interview and like uh, if you do have like .NET core as your domain so you can just click on the i button and uh, you can just go through all the interview series i have made so i have tried to cover all the questions related to the .NET c sharp react js javascript and sql okay so let's see what is caching okay so caching is a technique or a process of storing the data somewhere or in the cache for the future request okay so long story short let me tell you what happens here okay so uh, let's say you do have an application right right so what happens someone will come to the application and try to fetch some details again and again it might be a different user okay so what happened like uh, let's say a person ram is trying to fetch some data from one application okay he may be require some xyz amount of data three or four times right so what will happen instead of getting the same data from the database again and again what we can do is once he fetches the data for the first time we will get the data we'll store it into the cache and whenever he requires the same data again instead of hitting the database okay we'll get it from the cache itself so, uh, it is considered as the best solution to ensure the data is served where, wherever it is needed at the high level of efficiency okay it delivers web project faster to the end user it leads to the faster execution of any process it decreases the network cost okay as well as it increases the speed of the application there is a page caching data caching fragment caching okay there is something called output caching also uh, which is not there in this slide but whenever interviewer asks you can just uh, tell him there are these three type of caching basically okay let's move to the next question next question says what are web api filters okay so filters are required uh, when we want to achieve something between request and response okay so there are four kind of filters okay in mbc web api so the first one is authentication filters it checks the identity of the user okay so that is the work of the authentication filter the second one is uh, authorization filter so authorization filter is something which deals with the authorization okay it runs before controller action this filter is used to check whether uh, a user is authenticated or not okay so this filter will be called out uh, or this filter will be in use once this filter is done okay so then there is an action filter so action filter is applied to a controller action or the entire controller okay so it, it can be applied to a controller method or the entire controller it is used to add extra logic before or after controller action execution okay then there is an exception filter so the exception filter is used to handle exception that are unhandled in web api okay so what happened like we do have try catch uh, block inside the methods right so if some of the exceptions which are not handled by those stuff then it is going to be handled by this exception filter okay it is used wherever controller action throws an unhandled exception that is not http response exception it implements an i exception filter interface okay it says how many types of routing does web api supports and what are those okay so basically we do have two types of routing uh, one is the conventional based routing and another one is attribute routing okay so conventional routing is something which is like default routing so uh, there is a path defined so we assume that most of the requests which are coming to the controller will be matching with this root okay so uh, this is the one so <clears throat> you can declare or you can achieve the uh, conventional routing with the help of route config and the same thing you need to configure inside your global.ajax file uh, within application start method okay. so attribute routing is more to the point we have specified the uh, path uh, in a more proper manner okay so uh, this is something uh, which you can achieve with the help of web api config file and the same thing is like uh, you need to configure it in the startup.cs file or uh, uh, the global dot ajax uh, within application and start okay so uh, the attribute routing can be achieved uh, like this okay so either you can uh, achieve it at the top of the controller or you can achieve it uh, for every action methods okay so it, it is uh, achievable on the both front so let's move to the next question it says what are the main return types supported in wave api okay so uh, there are certain types of uh, return types so what happened right uh, when you write the controller method you need to define some return type okay on which you want to return your response to the application okay so there are uh, void so this is one of the return type okay with the empty content 
then second one is http response message so it will convert the response to an http message okay so the third one is i http action result it internally calls the execute async to create an http response message the other type so uh, you can create your custom return type uh, so like if you want to return some model right so you can create the return type for that model so uh, one of the disadvantage of having uh, other return type is you cannot return the error type of 404 okay so let's go to the next question it says how to register an exception filter globally okay so you must have seen the global.ajax file in your project so go to global.ajax file then within global.ajax file you will be having one method called application start so within that method you need to add this code global configuration dot configuration dot filters dot add and within bracket you need to create one instance of this instance of your uh, uh, exception filter okay like this let's go to the next question it says which protocol does web api supports okay so web api supports http protocol okay and .NET 4.0 enable version supports web api so this is also uh, one thing you need to keep in your mind so let's go to the next question it says what are the advantages of using web api okay so instead of like uh, using mbc why people are going with the web api so uh, the, there are main advantages like uh, o data it supports filter that we already discussed right uh, it supports content negotiation so content negotiation is something uh, that <coughs> you have a lot of option to decide uh, which is the correct format that response should be presented to the user okay so this is something available in the web api okay so there is something called self-hosting routing that is something we already discussed then there is a model binding so these are some of the advantages for which web api is preferred so let's go to the next question it says what is the status code web api sends for all uncount exception while sending the response okay so it sends 500 status code that is called internal server error let's go to the next question it says what are the advantage of using rest in web api so it allows less data transfer between clients and server it is easy to use and it's a lightweight it provides more flexibility it also handles control various type of calls like returning various data formats so you can return the data uh, you can return your response in uh, either of like xml or json any any format okay it is considered best for using it in mobile apps because it makes less data transfer between clients and servers let's see the next question it says what is the difference between rest and soap okay so let's see the differences so rest is basically an architectural pattern whereas soap is a messaging protocol uh, the second thing is rest works with various text formats like uh, plain text html json xml however soap only works with the xml format rest is a bit faster however soap is slower than the rest rest use xml and json for the data communication however uh, soap used wstl for the communication rest has reason wherever the determines any error okay so, but when, when it comes to soap it includes built-in error handling for communication error using ws reliable messaging specification okay so these are the differences between rest and soap till the next video till then bye bye take care